In the world of artificial intelligence, for the better part of a decade, one name has been the whole story, NVIDIA. Their graphics processing units, or GPUs, became the engine of the entire AI revolution. They are the undisputed kings, the foundational layer for the large language models you talk to, and the image generators that create entire worlds from a single sentence. For years, their dominance has been absolute, unbeatable. But there's a problem with having a king. Everyone else is just a subject, and an empire can start to feel a lot like a prison. The world of AI has been living under NVIDIA's reign, paying a very steep price for the privilege. But what if that's all about to change? What if, while the entire world was watching the throne, the biggest company in tech was quietly forging a weapon in the shadows? A weapon designed not just to compete, but to completely change the balance of power. It's called Ironwood. And it's not just a new chip. It is Google's seventh-generation tensor processing unit. After technical details were presented at Hot Chips 2025 in August, it's now becoming available on Google Cloud in late 2025. This isn't just another piece of silicon. It's a declaration of war on the AI establishment. This is the result of a decade-long secret project, a monster that's been quietly growing, evolving, and is now ready for battle. What we're witnessing isn't just a hardware update. It's the beginning of a rebellion against a multi-trillion dollar empire, and it could completely upend the industry as we know it. To really get why this is such a big deal, you have to understand the sheer scale of NVIDIA's empire. As of 2025, NVIDIA commands an astonishing 94% of the AI GPU market. Their AI-related revenue is projected to hit nearly $50 billion this year alone. Their market cap has soared past $4 trillion, a number that speaks for itself. But NVIDIA's power isn't just in its hardware. Selling chips is one thing. Building a kingdom is another. Their real fortress, the thing that truly locks everyone in, is a piece of software called CUDA. Standing for Compute Unified Device Architecture, CUDA is a special language that lets developers speak directly to the thousands of tiny cores inside an NVIDIA GPU unlocking their massive parallel processing power. Over the last 15 years, NVIDIA poured billions into making CUDA the industry standard. They built a huge ecosystem of libraries, sponsored university research, and trained a whole generation of AI developers to think in CUDA. The result is a deep, powerful moat. Even if a competitor builds a faster chip, an AI company can't just switch. Their entire code base, their years of expertise, their whole development pipeline, it's all built on CUDA. Trying to leave is technically and financially crippling. This is the source of the infamous NVIDIA tax. It's not just the premium price you pay for their top-of-the-line GPUs. It's the cost of being locked into their ecosystem. With demand for AI compute going through the roof, NVIDIA has been able to name its price, and for a long time, the industry had no choice but to pay. There just wasn't a real alternative. That's the problem Google set out to solve over a decade ago. Long before the world was obsessed with generative AI, Google was facing its own computational crisis. Services like Search, YouTube, and Google Photos were using deep learning at a planetary scale, and the cost of running them on commercial GPUs was becoming a huge problem. They realized that if their user base kept growing, they'd need to double their data centers, a path that just wasn't sustainable. So, they started a secret project. The goal, build their own custom chip, an application-specific integrated circuit, ASIC, designed to do one thing and one thing only, run their AI models with brutal efficiency. This was the birth of the Tensor Processing Unit, or TPU. The first few generations of TPUs were interesting, but the outside world mostly dismissed them as a niche tool for Google's internal needs. While NVIDIA's GPUs were like a powerful, all-purpose computer, TPUs were more like a specialized calculator. They were less flexible. But for the specific math that powers AI, tensor operations, they were incredibly fast and power efficient. Google just kept iterating, generation after generation, mostly in silence. While NVIDIA was soaking up the spotlight, Google was in the lab, patiently sharpening its weapon. They built entire systems around these chips, pioneering new ways to link thousands of them into a single, colossal supercomputer. They developed a whole new software stack with frameworks like JAX and the XLA compiler designed to orchestrate these massive computing fleets. This wasn't just about building a chip. 
it was about building a whole new way to compute. And then came the seventh generation, the one they codenamed Ironwood. And with its arrival, the quiet revolution became a very loud rebellion. Now becoming available on Google Cloud in late 2025, Ironwood isn't just an incremental improvement, it's a massive leap forward. This is the moment Google's long-term strategy finally crashes into NVIDIA's market dominance. Let's break down why this chip is such a threat. First, the raw performance. For the first time, Google is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with NVIDIA's best on a per-chip basis. While NVIDIA's highly coveted Blackwell B200 GPU clocks in at 4.5 petaflops of FP8 performance, Ironwood is right there in the same league. The raw horsepower advantage NVIDIA has held for years is now gone. The memory specs tell a similar story. Each Ironwood chip has 192 gigabytes of the latest HBM3E memory, with a bandwidth of around 7.4 terabytes per second. This is nearly identical to the 192 gigabytes and 8 terabytes per second on NVIDIA's B200. This huge amount of memory is critical for large language models, letting them hold more data directly on the chip and dramatically speeding up processing. But where Ironwood really pulls away is not in the individual chip, but in the system. The real magic of Google's strategy is scalability. While NVIDIA's flagship systems connect 72 GPUs together, Google's architecture is on another planet entirely. Google connects its Ironwood TPUs into what it calls a superpod. A single Ironwood superpod links an incredible 9,116 individual chips together. They're woven together by Google's custom interchip interconnect, or ICI, with a blistering 9.6 terabits per second of bandwidth per TPU. This creates a single machine with access to a shared memory pool of 1.77 petabytes. To put that in perspective, that's over 1,770,000 gigabytes of unified memory. This lets them run models of a size and complexity that are simply unimaginable on other systems. The total power of one Ironwood pod is 42.5 exaflops, an almost unbelievable number. This brings us to the most important metric, efficiency. Google claims Ironwood offers double the performance per watt of its predecessor and is nearly 30 times more efficient than the first-generation TPU. In an industry where electricity and cooling costs are becoming crippling, this is a game-changing advantage. And the industry is noticing. The most stunning validation of Ironwood's power comes from Anthropic, creators of the Claude AI model. In a landmark deal, Anthropic has made a massive commitment to using Google's TPUs, with an ambitious plan to access up to 1 million of them to train its future models. 1 million chips. Let that sink in. This is one of the largest hardware commitments in history, a clear signal that for those at the absolute frontier of AI, Google's hardware offers a serious edge in cost and performance. Popular app developer Lightrix has also chosen TPUs, showing this appeal is broadening. So, if Ironwood is so powerful, is NVIDIA finished? Not at all. To understand this new landscape, you have to see that these two companies built fundamentally different tools for different jobs. The best analogy is transportation. Think of an NVIDIA GPU powered by CUDA as a high-performance motorcycle. It's incredibly agile and versatile. You can take it anywhere, on the highway, down a winding country lane, or even off-road to explore a new trail. This makes it perfect for research and development. When you're inventing a new AI architecture or experimenting with a wild idea, Nothing beats the flexibility of a GPU and the mature do-anything CUDA ecosystem. Now, think of a Google TPU pod as a high-speed bullet train. It's not designed for exploring back roads. It's designed to run on a specific track, between two major cities, carrying a massive number of passengers with incredible speed and efficiency. It does one job, but it does that job better than anything else on Earth. This is the world of AI inference. Once a model like Claude or Gemini has been trained, it needs to be served to millions of users, answering their questions 24-7. This is a stable, predictable, high-volume workload, the perfect job for a TPU. For a company like Anthropic, the ability to serve its model to customers at a lower cost per query is a huge competitive advantage. Google's architecture, with its focus on massive scale and power efficiency, is purpose-built for industrializing AI. So the conflict isn't really GPU versus TPU. It's flexibility versus efficiency, the motorcycle versus the bullet train. For a decade, the industry only had the motorcycle. Now, 
there's a bullet train. And for many of the biggest workloads in AI, that train is starting to look like a much smarter way to travel. The ultimate battle for AI's future won't be won on hardware specs. It will be fought on the dual battlefields of software and economics. NVIDIA's greatest defense is still the CUDA moat. It represents over a decade of developer loyalty, established workflows, and a massive library of optimized code. Most AI talent in the world is trained on NVIDIA's platform. This is powerful inertia, but every empire has a weakness, and for NVIDIA, it's the very tax it imposes on its subjects. The cost of AI computation is becoming a critical pain point for the entire industry. Training a single frontier model can cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and the energy consumption is astronomical. This is the wedge Google is driving into the CUDA moat. They are making a simple, powerful argument. The pain of learning a new software stack is less than the pain of paying the NVIDIA tax. Google's software ecosystem, primarily JAX and OpenXLA, is designed for this new world of massive distributed computing. JAX has a steeper learning curve than the popular PyTorch framework, but it's revered by those who use it for its ability to scale almost seamlessly from a single chip to thousands. Critically, the XLA compiler is hardware agnostic, offering a path away from being locked into one type of hardware. The biggest AI labs are already taking notice. Companies like Anthropic, DeepMind, and Midjourney are heavy users of JAX. Why? Because at their scale, the economic benefits are too big to ignore. A recent IDC report highlighted by Google found that customers on its AI hypercomputer platform saw an average three-year ROI of 353%, with 28% lower IT costs and 55% more efficient IT teams. When you can potentially cut your multi-million dollar training bill in half, you get very motivated to learn a new programming framework. The fight is now a strategic calculation for every AI company. Do you stick with the familiar comfort of NVIDIA's motorcycle, even as the price of fuel skyrockets? Or do you invest the effort to build a station for Google's bullet train, knowing it will deliver far better long-term economics? This shift is creating a fascinating dynamic. We're moving from a world where one company held all the cards to a world with real competition. This isn't just about faster chips. It's about a fundamentally different philosophy for building and deploying AI. The big question for the next five years is which approach will win out. Will developers break their powerful CUDA habit for better economics? Or will NVIDIA's vast empire hold strong? Let me know which side you think will win this war in the comments below. What we are witnessing is not the death of NVIDIA, but the end of its monopoly. For the first time in a decade, there is a credible, powerful, and economically viable alternative for building the future of AI. Google's Ironwood TPU is more than a secret weapon. It's a catalyst that has transformed the AI hardware market from a kingdom into a battlefield. The conflict between NVIDIA's flexible GPU ecosystem and Google's hyper-efficient TPU architecture isn't a simple story of one chip beating another. It's about the industry growing up. It signals a shift from focusing purely on research and raw performance to a new era defined by scale, efficiency, and sustainable economics. The motorcycle will always be essential for exploration. But as AI becomes a global utility, the world is going to need a lot of bullet trains. The balance of power is shifting. The AI industry is moving from a monopoly to a duopoly, and the competition will define the next decade of technology. The real winner in this war won't be Google or NVIDIA. It will be the developers, the businesses, and ultimately, all of us, who will benefit from the explosion of innovation that true competition finally brings. If you want to stay ahead of the curve on the AI hardware race and understand the forces shaping our future, make sure you subscribe for more breakdowns like this one.